So today's project started out exactly like my previous one with the sign. And honestly, that's because the sign was going to be twice as big. So this was a second piece to it, which started with two inch strips of wood of random blocks, piecing them together and then gluing them together, leaving that for a couple days. All right, guys. So I have this piece um, glued down and, you know, it's secured and I'm just leaving it set. I believe wood glue at a minimum only needs a couple hours. But usually just with my work schedule anyways and all that, I set it and I'll probably leave it here for a couple days. I doubt I'll be able to get back to it today. Slim possibility, but most likely not. So it probably won't even be moved for a few days. This footage right here is actually from my previous project of a sign that I made, but it's the exact same process. I did not film when I was planing down this piece, which I had glued together. All right, guys. So I had originally been making two of these pieces of wood and after I got them planed down I was going to glue them together and make one large sign. Decided and realized my sign didn't need to be any bigger than it was already and I had a second project in mind. So I'm actually using the second one for something different. I am making a tie rack. Um, it's going to be a wall hanging tie rack. I bought these little um, knobs if you will off of Amazon and they just have a screw in uh so they should go in fairly simple i'm going to drill holes but yeah they, they came in a pack of 25 i'm going to use 20 of them because it's an even number i think it was like 10 or 12 bucks something like that so anyways i got my base plate piece here i'm going to do we're going to see what it looks like i'm guessing here we have 10 across because the thought was two rows of 10 but that might be too many we also are going to have to alternate these the tie is going to be hanging down so i'm trying to figure out what's going to work out best here my width is 33 inches and i'm going to have a couple side pieces along here i think so each of them is going to be approximately an inch so it's going to be like 31 inches so if i divide by so that's going to be like every three inches for ties so you know the ties aren't gonna take up tons of space and then I'll put the next ropes so then that's the next question should go here and here I think that's where to go it leaves one below it leaves two above there's also gonna be a ledge so yeah so now a lot of thinking and playing this out in my head I'm gonna put these right smack in the middle of that row Every three inches is what I said. Well, let's move these. Okay, so I'm using the bottom of that row for the bottom ledge of my tape measure. Here's two, then we'll go from there to five, eight. So I've started there at two here, so it should be like an inch in from where my sidewall is going to be. But it's going to be over like four inches here. But that's okay because these ones are going to be to the left, the other ones will be to the right. So that this row will be closer to the wall. Okay. That makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to you guys or not. Start four. Four, seven, ten. Perfect. All right. So now I just need to drill a small hole, no deeper than what these are going to screw. So I'm going to get a very small drill bit. All right, guys. So I got a very small drill bit. This is not. This is smaller than the tip here, and uh, yeah, I'll try and get them in shot here. I also took and I stuck that up to it, so I know I'm not going past. I used the blue tape. It looks pretty ridiculous, but I know not to drill any deeper than that. I wanted to take care of these, so yeah, here we go. Ten for each total, twenty holes. Alright, there's the first one. I'm not going to stop every time because I don't want these all getting in the way of my drilling. I just want to see how this is going to work out. It's 
It's going to take some effort to do this 20 times. Right. Let's get 19 more holes drilled here. I'm trying to make a conscious effort to make sure I'm straight up and down. There we go. So I'm just getting a little dab. And I'm going to start up here because this is really close to where there's already a nail hole. And... This one is a, I'm nervous about. This may be a trouble spot. So I want to do this one very first. That one, and then this one right over here is right on a joint. So those two got me concerned. The other should just be as a matter of just screwing them in. And yeah, it kind of stinks by hand. I'm sure there could probably be a more efficient way to do this. Or if I drilled the hole out a little bit with a bigger drill bit that might make it easier but I don't want these to go anywhere so I've started something by using the tiny bit and they screw in really snug and tight so I'm okay with all that all right I'm gonna put you guys on a time lapse I don't think you want to sit there and watch this go this slow the whole time Okay, I'm okay with how that turned out. Got my 20 knobs on there now. They're very snug. Now we're going to work on the top. We're going to put a ledge on the top of it. So I need to take a measurement and make some cuts. 33 inches. All right, now we're going to bring out the router and just try to give ourselves an edge here. Um, I'm going to use... Uh, one and a quarter chamfer with the bearing. I've not used that one before. A little straight. It's not curved. It's not got the design of the other. So, try, just trying one different that I haven't used much of. So, let's go ahead. Show you what this edge looks like and I need to change where this is grabbed onto. Okay guys, so I have two separate projects going on here right now. I got a mess, but with the same basis, which was this uh, block, the random wood that I cut into two inch strips and then had all kinds of different sizes, different types of wood, different uh, stain textures and everything. And then I planed it down to a level, level uh, after I glued them together, planed it all down. So it's like a, almost like a butcher block, but with a different take on it. This one looks like an absolute mess right now. I'm really hoping I can uh, come through with what I have envisioned here. There's resin in several spots there. Obviously, this is all resin. I'm going to get rid of this here in a bit. That's a different project, though. So for the moment, I'm going to continue with this project. And uh, what I need to do is this is my top. I, I decided I was thinking about doing some extra. I was going to put some side parts on and stuff. And I decided in the end to just keep this simple. I was also going to route an, an edge or a notch out of this, like almost like a key spot, like to set your keys and your change on top of this tie rack, because this is going to be a tie rack. And then I realized, like, no, I'm going to leave it so it's more versatile. It's a flat surface. If you still wanted to throw your keys up there, you'd be able to do that. But, um, you know, if this goes up on your wall and you wanted to put some kind of, I mean, I don't know, if you want to put a picture up there, if I put a little notch groove in here I might be making that harder to do so I'm keeping this plain I'm not putting edges on it um, and of course I've routed this that should be the last thing I just did so yeah so let's go ahead and glue this on and then staple it on and then we're gonna apply some uh, polyurethane to coat this I have 
I have this picture hanging system, which is designed for a little bit more weight, you know, and it makes it a lot easier. You secure this to one side or to the back of this, and then the other half of it, you just secure to your wall and uh, makes it real easy for hanging. It's going to hold the weight up there. There's also some like TV uh, wall mounts that are kind of a similar design. So I like these. I bought this at Lowe's. I think it was like $15, $20, or something like that. So anyways, let's go ahead and put this top on like I talked about. It's kind of convenient. This is sitting up on its own. That makes this a little easier for me. I'm kind of wiggling it around on top there just a little bit just to kind of spread that wood. My air compressor is turned up a little bit. Every one of these is going to have to be tapped down a little. I would turn it up, but I'm going to be done in 30 seconds So with this. I don't have any other use for the air compressor right now, so that's why I'm just not going to bother. All right, let me set that down for a moment. Okay. I probably mentioned to you guys in the past, but something, if I'm going to reuse something in a few days, a uh, paintbrush or a foam brush, wrap it in a grocery bag real tight. That plastic, you can use saran wrap or whatever too, but I mean, grocery bags are literally free and you always have a bunch of them and I hate seeing them go in the landfill. Well, this one eventually will, but at least it got one extra use beforehand. But yeah, you can save your brushes if you don't want to rinse them out and all that good stuff. Um, just by wrapping them up real tight in a plastic bag, obviously that won't, that doesn't have a endless time life, on, uh, time span on it, but you know, if you're going to be using it soon, is this one stained? It's not showing up, but I don't think it was. I think this was just polyurethane. I really hope. It is a little st stiff now. I mean, these foam brushes are kind of not always the easiest to use. I could probably actually use a brush, like a chip brush for the poly. Uh, at least for stain, I like using these foam ones because with stain, when you use a brush, a lot of times you'll get the brush strokes in there, and we don't want that. I want to get the sides real good because, you know, this will be hung on a wall and... You might see the sides, so I don't want to treat the front and not the sides of it. Okay, guys, so the tire rack is complete. It's got two coats of polyurethane on it, just like the sign that I was working on. These videos will come out at different times, but I was working on these projects simultaneously. I really I like the way this tie rack came out a little better than the sign just because some of the woods and the patterns like I used more diagonal pieces of wood in there and there's some really dark woods and so you know I couldn't predict that I didn't do it on purpose but I just feel like the uh, poly on this really accented these woods a lot more and I really kind of like the pattern the way they turned out um, the tie rack should do its job I got it actually leaning against the sign that we just completed right now to show it. I did not put this um, picture hanging system on because there's no point, and this is how it goes, there's no point in screwing on one piece and then you got one that's loose and not in the packaging. So when I give this as a gift, I'm just going to give it all at once. Otherwise, I would have, I mean, and there, what's there to show you guys, you know, I make sure it's level, I measure it, and I screw it to the back side of it. So I'm happy with this tie rack i think it's pretty unique pretty interesting this is just going to go on the wall and it was just wood and polyurethane and like i said i bought these knobs off amazon so that's where we're at 
Let me know what you guys think of this tie rack. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thank you.